ASAP Rocky has made platinum albums, he's become a fashion icon, and he's even fertilized Rihanna. But many people forget that early on, people were furious at him. ASAP Rocky was even thought of as a traitor by some. So here's the story. ASAP Rocky grew up in New York, a city that has a strong hip-hop history. But in the early 2010s, New York was actually losing its musical identity. So when ASAP Rocky came along and he started putting out his own music, it actually angered a lot of people in New York. And it's easy to see why. He was one of the early artists whose music was more influenced by the internet rather than his home city. His music just wasn't influenced by New York hip hop as much. ASAP Rocky chose not to be limited by the sound of his home city. And this is why he was met with so much criticism when he started and why his own people often didn't accept his music, calling it weirdo rap. He just wasn't doing what people expected him to, to sound like New York. But even with this, ASAP Rocky continued to push forward, past the criticism, and he believed in his own vision and sound. Eventually, he put out his first official mixtape, Live Love ASAP. And with this project, he was able to break through everyone's expectations of him. And the beats on this mixtape helped artists around the world start to think differently and be free of having a region-locked sound. So today we're going to break down some of the beats on this project and as we do, you'll start to see why Live Love ASAP was so important to hip hop and music as a whole. But before we start, think about hitting like or subscribe and uh, if you do, I'll think you're a pretty cool dude. I'll even tell all my friends about you and uh, we can all go on a camping trip together. So yeah, hit one of those buttons. Starting off, the first beat that's one of the best examples of ASAP Rocky going against hip hop's expectations of him can be found on Keep It G. This is music for the villains, sophisticated cheering ASAP. Now here's why this is such a great example. Take a listen to the sample. This is a funk slash soul record, making it perfect for a beat that would have that traditional New York sound, something like this. But again, ASAP Rocky had no interest in using traditional New York beats. Take a look at how this beat was made instead. First, this is the chop from the sample that was used here. And from here, it's a very simple approach to sampling. There's no chopping or rearranging or filtering or anything like that. This piece of the sample is simply played at minus four semitones and then minus two semitones. But what's also interesting about this beat is its structure. Even though ASAP Rocky was influenced by Southern artists, it's not as if we simply have trap drums around the slow down sample and that's it. If we did, the beat would sound something like this. But again, ASAP Rocky didn't simply emulate Southern music either. Take a look at what Space Ghost Perp, the producer of this song, did instead. He got rid of the typical Southern style hi-hats and in their place, we have two other sounds. One of them is this short horn stab, which does the job of a hi-hat, setting a consistent pace for the beat. And the other is, from what it sounds like, from my own guesstimate, a filtered symbol from the exact same sample. And this helps do the other job of a hi-hat, which is fill up the higher frequency space. And these approaches help give the beat an entirely new feel, making it more than just an imitation of a southern beat. It's these techniques that helped ASAP Rocky pioneer a unique sound on this project. We can even see him do something similar on another beat on this project, Peso. Here the sampling approach is very similar. Once again, here is the sample.
And this is the chop that was used by ASAP Thai, producer of this beat. It's this spacey synthy part of the sample that's used. And this time the sample is simply played at minus 10 semitones three times in a row, and then minus three semitones with the last chop being cut off. But once again for this beat, take a look at the structure and you'll notice something similar to Keep It G. These drums don't have a strong rhythmic structure that a southern beat would either. We don't have trappy hi-hats and when we look at the snare, we have something different happening here too. Here is how a typical trap snare would look and sound. It's far shorter and far more dry, and if we listen to the snare in this beat, it is far more prolonged and it even has a touch of reverb on it, making it sound spacier as well. And this is why it's not as simple as saying Live Love ASAP merely has a southern influence and that ASAP Rocky was a traitor to New York. He wasn't simply trying to be a down south artist. You can see and hear he's combining a lot of different influences and ideas from many different regions to create something new and different, which eventually became referred to as cloud rap. It's this lack of drum structure and spacey sounds and samples that make these beats sound so different. And this is exemplified best by the beats made by Clams Casino on this mixtape. When we break down the beats he made on this project, you can see that he takes these ideas and pushes them even further. One such beat is for the song Palace. Stone cold love, rose gold slug. I could afford it, I import it, stone cold drugs. Which uses this sample here. So again, we start off with very minimal and sparse drums, the same ideas that we've seen before. Now, signature of Clams Casino's beats is using vocals as the main sound for the beat. But instead of the sped up soul version that was so popular in New York, Clams did something different. We don't have a traditional soul sample from the 60s or 70s. We have this operatic sample instead. So here's the main section of the sample that was used. And in terms of techniques, we have some more advanced things going on like chopping and rearranging, as well as the use of effects to help give the beat a bigger and cloudier feel. So you can see a lot of consistencies between these beats. Drums that provide less structure and samples and sounds that feel more hazy and spaced out. So let's try to make a beat with these same ideas. Here's the sample that I'm gonna try to use. And I'll make something that's more on the Clams Casino side of Live Love ASAP. I'll start by making micro chops, which is yet another technique that Clams uses every once in a while. Right now I know it sounds like a bunch of nonsense, but stick with me. Next I'll EQ this layer to get rid of a lot of the frequencies and add some delay onto it to give it that spacier feel. Then I'll duplicate this sample out and layer this second part here. And now once I bring in a thick big bass as well as creating that minimal drum structure, we have ourselves a cloud rap beat in the style of Clams Casino. So 
So these are the production techniques that made Live Love ASAP sound so special and made it so revolutionary as well. And it was one of the first projects that we started to see the internet have such a big influence. So let me know your thoughts on Live Love ASAP and whether you liked it and hopefully you liked this video. If you did, think about hitting like or subscribe and uh, yeah, I'll see you next week.